you see this manky looking bougainvillea here? As much as I like bougainvillea, I have to say that this one is kept trimmed because it is a bug magnet and I'm not having any of that close to my top guns over here. So I'm keeping close eye on this one. There are still some mealy bugs around. And welcome everybody to a little look at what's going on with my really hot growers. You can see the sun has just left and put this corner into shade. I do have construction noise in the background. It is lunchtime. I was waiting for them to stop, but I'm thinking I'm going to film this. I'm going to see how bad it is noise wise. I have something called a dead cat on my microphone. <laughs> I don't know. That's what they call it. Don't ask me, but I want to see how it takes out the white noise and how the sound is. So forgive me. I'm sorry if it's irritating. I will do my best to maybe pause in between when it's the worst noise in the background. But gotta get this filmed. I gotta test this out. So I appreciate your patience with me. And let's have a look at some of the hot growers back here and how they're doing. Things are happening quite quickly. Um, bits and bobs and surprises would be in episode 20, but that is a bit tedious, so I'm going to just give a quick overview and eventually there will be, these are my candidates for the silicon part two. And if there's anything more substantial, we'll look at them closer at that point in time. So I have an epidendrum here, which was supposed to be epidendrum nocturnum, but the nursery sent me the wrong epidendrum. But I think there's a reason for everything. And I'm glad I got this one because the nocturnum being pendant, I'm not entirely sure where I would have had it. So this one is about to bloom on three growths that I can see so far. We have blooms coming. My nobly has now finished blooming and it is now going to live here for the rest of the summer. It has several new growths coming. This is hot and a lot of light for like six hours of the day. So it has moved into its summer domicile. And here I have also the Lelia purpurata variety Verkhoiserii. And she is growing quite well. I have something happening here on the corner. There's a new growth tucked in there. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And doing quite well over here. I don't hardly have to move them. Sometimes I bring them out to give them a spray. But back here is a sheath, an old mangy looking sheath, but it is chubby in the middle. So I'm keeping an eye on that. It's a little bit glued together from the happy sap it once had. So I'm just watching to make sure maybe I need to cut this sheath. But there are blooms happening in Lelia purpurata verkhoiserii. And then here is my uh, Roebling. CG Roebling Blue Indigo and it's pushing out growth left, right and center. I have three leads now this year. So this is one of the secondary growths that has been started up. Here's a third one down here, but the first growth that has matured is right back here. This one here, but there's nothing in the apex down there. So we shall see, maybe it's just putting on some bulk and then next year it'll bloom for me again. I got two blooms from it last year. So I, th I was just expecting it'll bloom it again. But if you're gonna give me three directions of growth, take your time, you're fine, do what you need to. I'm okay with that. And here I have the, the um, what did we say this was the last time, Chunya. Chunya Good Life number one. That's where this one lived. We just saw that in a bits and bobs and surprises. And right next to it is the Sagarik Wax African Beauty. That's where this one lives. I have brought the Nani Puakea Dogoshima from my prime location where you saw it's quite shaded, a bit protected, lots of light, but not direct sun. She has never bloomed for me. And that has to change 
because as an orchid goes, she's awesome. She's very vigorous. Three new growths here, four there, you know, five, six. I mean, new growths, awesome performer, no blooms. So I've moved her here to see if the extra light will trigger some blooms. This, I believe, is golden cellar. Yep, right here. Golden cellar just does one growth per year and it hasn't changed that. So I have the new growth for golden cellar here. And back here, right at the back is the Epicat Lea ciliare crossed with Brassavola digbiana. Let me move around the corner a little bit more. And this one has surprised me a little bit. I was expecting that this growth, which is now matured, to give me the sheath within the sheath within the sheath teasing process but there's nothing nothing going on there great roots instead she's pushing out another new growth in the back here so that's a first two directions of growth there's also an eye hold on a second there's also an eye pushing down there maybe three directions of growth all right do your thing don't worry about the blooms the more vigorous you get Happy me. We've got here the Lelia purpurata variety striata, right here, with another new growth coming. So that's awesome. I'm just glad about that. I need a vigorous purpurata. So she's doing well, growing roots, new growth. This is my Schumburkia or Myrmecophilia, and I can't get the tag out, but I think it's Tigris. Thomsonii, sorry, tigress. Thomsonii, doing really well. Haven't repotted yet, but it has to come. It will happen shortly, soon, when I can get my act together and maybe put some headphones on and hope that you can tolerate the noise. But no, this one needs to be repotted. It's growing great new roots. I'm loving that. This is the fleece from the shower curtain that just keeps peeling off, but that's okay. No new growth yet. They're trying to bulge down here, but I'm, uh, yeah, it needs to be repotted. I don't want it to have to struggle with quetching new growths around the back here, if that should happen. These are already quite tight up against the pot. We saw golden cellar, we saw African Beauty, lower shelf. Let's go lower shelf. This one's exciting as well down here. Hang on a second. This is also a Lelia purpurata crossed with self. And this is back Häuserii. And this, look at that. That wasn't out this morning. When I came to give them their first humidity spray, this had not burst forth. So happy days. Oh yes. I didn't see if that was in focus. I was doing some funky movement. Oh yeah. Fantastic. Very glad to see that. Okay, let's go down in here. Who are you? I know you. I've seen you before. <laughs> oh yes, this is golf green. <laughs> Golf green after blooming has done nothing except push out roots. So this growth that bloomed is now just in full on root production mode. And I think down there you can see that there is a little bit of a swelling coming on. So golf green lives down here because you see, I'm burnt it. Ah, gotta be more careful. Even though I have a shower curtain, I gotta be more careful. So it's gone into the back edges there. And then here I have another, no, this is Lelia Tenebrosa Aurea right here. All it's doing now after being root, root, root heavy, all this is now packed in with roots. It is now starting a new growth. And here is our Sunya green that we cut the rhizome on on a video and it doesn't done anything in the back here except the front yes those eyes are popping out bulging 
I like it. You see that one growth over there? And then there's another one tucked right back here. Ah, there, <laughs> with my finger right there is another one coming through. Lots of root production going on. I don't have any growth in the back here yet. So we have to wait for that one. And then here, little fairy has done nothing except for producing some roots. I'm expecting to see a new growth. I'm hoping for a new growth. It's about time. The same with my Rincolelia digbiana, tucked away over here. She has just been going nuts with root production. That's all that's going on in here. No new growth to speak of just yet. And I face her away because I make sure I want my growth to come towards the light. So I'm tra training them that way. And then I've got Happy Holiday right in the back over there. There's a new growth just starting. All these roots are new. That's what it's been busy with. And back here, there's a new growth just starting. So we'll see. Happy Holiday hasn't bloomed for me yet. I find this all a bit late in the season, but whatever, just, just do it. You're fine. No stress, not from me. And then I have a catacetum right in front. Let me get back up. Right in front here is my catacetum Fred Clarkara after dark. That's this one right here. Beautiful leaf out coming up. It's got a little small growth back here, but this is impressive. Now you see all those spots there? That is happy sap. That is no spider mites. But this is now in full on watering mode. The reservoir is full. And on top of that, I, I have um, the osmocote on the top, which when I spray during the day in the mornings, that then disperses down into the pot. But these leaves, they are tough. They are tough. They are not the flimsy catacetum leaves that I'm so used to. And then let me show you Siamese doll. Remember? Something got in the way there in the form of the buds. Yeah, we're going to have one. So that's great. At least I'll be having being compensated with one bloom. It's better than nothing. So I'm quite pleased about that. The growths are chucking out roots like there's no tomorrow. And in the back, I just had to reposition myself because Siliano is in the naughty corner. He reached out and chomped the leaves. And you are the Sanya Green mailman. So yeah, he's in the naughty corner and so am I. I thought I had these leaves, this plant, way away from him, from where he hangs out in the afternoon. But nope, he went for these leaves. Oh well, it's a shame. But having said that, he's pushing out a new growth. So that's a good thing. And then I tuck her back again in reverse, the white wall will reflect a lot of light and that's the first direction but then the orchid will straighten herself as the growth matures to such a degree that the growth isn't in the way like this leaf here right now see this what a nuisance so the reflection of the wall encourages the growth to go towards the light but then eventually the light will be stronger from the opposite direction so that's where she is for the time being and here is now where my berryoda lives and i have a little straggler spike well a few more blooms to come just one spike little straggler but chucking out some new growths at the base I got one there there and some around the back and then here is my Ancelia Africana and my Stamf Epidendrum Stamfordianum with now a new growth starting at the base. Bottom shelf, but not much darker. This is a very highlight area regardless of where you position your orchids. 
This is the Maxillaria No ID, supposedly Tenofolia as it was sold to me, but it's not. And then here I have my Catacetums. This one is the latest to wake up and the last one. This is my Jack of Diamonds. So already lives here and let me show you. You see these spots? These spots right here, that is Happy Sap. Already doing the damage. The ants are so busy in the other Catacetums, they haven't come to this one yet. This is not spider mites. And that's what happens when there's so much Happy Sap. And then here I have my Jumbo Mickey doing absolutely amazing. These are the flimsy leaves that I mentioned before. I find these quite flimsy, more soft than the touch. But this one has three stonking new growths coming out. And behind, behind all of them are all my little Rapiculus Lelias. I've got roots coming out. There's only one that isn't doing much. But other than that, everybody else is on new growth mode, maturing their new growth. That one right there is maturing its new growth. Beautiful, beautiful. Love it. Big one, big yummy one. And then other than that, just roots. And there's only one that's doing nothing. So I'm keeping an eye on that. And here's my Aberrans crossed with Polysema and my little Speciosum. My Tsuru lives down here. Yeah, so this is where my top guns live, right here. And then we will, I will do the silicon series, the second part, as I mentioned, with these guys. And we'll look at them a little closer. I just wanted to give you a brief tour. It's been a while of what is now living for the rest of the summer in the hot side. And this is where my mailman was, located right there and he grabbed from the side of the cage or the screen there onto my leaves. Naughty, naughty, naughty. All right, everybody. Keep your fingers crossed. This is gonna be a nice little show. Thank you everybody so very much for watching and uh, I'll hope to see you next time. Next time we see these guys, they will be taking a silicon bath and I will review and talk about all the comments, which I thought were super interesting. So I appreciate very much your engagement and that you comment on my videos. And please know that you're not being ignored. I will be addressing those comments and let's have a chit chat about them. So thank you so much everybody for watching. And I look forward to seeing you on my comment section and in your next videos. Take care everybody, bye.